Welcome to this short series of videos where I talk to some of the CF community's most well-known and loved faces about the power of sharing your story. We live in an age where it's easier than ever to connect with like-minded others who share the same passions or go through the same things we do. Whether it's forums, Facebook groups, via blogs, or right here on Instagram or YouTube, everywhere we look, there are virtual scenes where people come together and talk about things that are truly important to them. So whether you have CF or not, and particularly if you don't, it's my belief that there is a lot to learn from this amazing bunch of individuals. We move in this episode from one amazing guy and last week's guest, Mr. Chris Kerr, which if you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out, to another amazing guy who is also very well known in the community. And I have to say is refreshingly open, honest, and so natural when telling his story. He talks really naturally to camera, so much so that you always feel like he's addressing you personally. It really is a breath of fresh air. Now, when I think about this guy, I get another image in my mind. And it's an image that makes me really nervous because what you see is a 30 something year old guy delicately perched on the end of a sofa with his midriff on show thanks to a makeshift crop top come hoodie and a rather revealing pair of shorts that leave nothing to the imagination. And the look is tied together with a pair of knee high socks and neon pumps. And the caption reads, if women can pose, then so can men. Hashtag strike a pose, hashtag bold and proud, hashtag flash the flesh. But <laughs> it's the look on his face that really sets this off for me. Absolute blue steel seriousness. And he 100% works that camera. And I have to tell you, when I first saw that image, I've not been that nervous about a semi since the last World Cup. <laughs> but to ground this in something more serious and real, and as an insight into this guy's heart and mind, he continues the caption by saying, not just for the banter, but for Nicole Adams, because of what she's been through with cystic fibrosis and all that she's doing to raise funds for the charity and awareness for CF in general. And for me, this is 100% what you should expect from this man. A lot of laughs, but a whole lot of love as well. And I think the world can learn a hell of a lot from people just like him. Some know him as simply Foxy. I think of him as ambitious, hardworking, and brutally honest. It is Mr. Jamie Fox, everybody. How's it going, mate? <laughs> yeah, good, mate. So, I'm good. Thanks for the lovely intro. You're welcome, mate. You're welcome. Um, so, listen, we're talking about sharing your story um, in a CF context, but I think, as I say, a lot of people can learn a lot from this community, you know, who open up and who are just 100% real. And, yeah, and that's why I wanted to speak to you today. Um, there are ways and means of opening up about CF. You know, some of us dip our toes into this by following a few people, maybe share a few posts or interact with a few posts, you know, and eventually we build up that courage to open up and share something ourselves. And we nervously await that feedback, you know, how will my friends, close family react to this and, and will yeah. the community respond as well? That's one way to go about it, you know, but then there's another way, another way that you introduced us to. And it's where we pick possibly one of the most well-known female CFers um, and we dress up like them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we set up a photo opportunity like none other. And boom, there you have it. Look at me, world. Um, it was literally my first interaction with you. And um, yes, yeah. I I'm keen to understand why that post, you know, wh where did that come from? Uh, and and was that your first interaction with the community? Had you done stuff before? And how do you feel about it now? Uh, in, in terms of like my, my social media, it's always been closed, particularly Instagram. But when everything sort of started going on with this in the last 18 months, I just opened up and I'd been talking to Nicole and uh, Chris and got to know quite a few people in the community. And 
I'd sort of ummed and ahed about opening my social media and then everyone just said, look, you just put up honesty, just open it up. You know, it's it's there for everyone to see. And all of a sudden I knew I like, I'd seen Nicole put that photo up of her posing and we'd been talking about me yeah. copying and she didn't think I was serious. So I was <laughs> like, what better way to open my social media than say, hello world. But also that was my way of saying, this is me, you know, this is my CF. A lot of people understand that CF is physical and mental, but I wanted to show me as me that this is my this is me. I am cystic fibrosis in my own body and I can't hide from how I look. So it was kind of my way of saying, don't be afraid to just be yourself. But it was also me sort of doing it for the giggle and, and opening my world up in a lighthearted way for everyone to say, well, yeah, I have cystic fibrosis, but you don't see it. What you see is some idiot copying someone else's photo because well, why not? Yeah, I totally agree. I think if anything, mate, over the last over the last year, that the sort of landscape of CF community has, has changed for me. Um, in the past, yeah, you know, I, I've kind of avoided too much contact with the CF world. But what I did come into contact with, it, it was always so serious. You know, it was always bad news yeah. and serious and and heart hitting you know, content that was perhaps some of the reasons why I sort of held off for so long. So, yeah. you know, to, to see so much humour in the, in the community these days and humour that only other CFers get, you know, and uh, that we can oh, all yeah, re- relate to is, is a real breath of fresh air. So I really mean that. And I think you, you've, you sort of set the pace with some of that as well, because I know a lot of people have opened up since off the back of some of those posts. Yeah, do you know what? It was some of the people that haven't opened their social media up that sort of convinced me to open mine up because I'd been talking to people and they'd been saying, you know, I like what you post. It's understandable. And I I, I was, I'm very open and honest with my CF, but like my social media had always been closed. And I just one day thought, well, let's just see what happens. Yeah. And if if my little CF world on Instagram or social media can help one person to understand that they're not going through it alone, then, it, you know, posing like a Wally or talking about CF, it's all worth it to, if yeah. it helps one person. Absolutely. I think I um, I remember, I think it was one of your stories during CF week where, because you opened up your pro- profile from a private profile to a public profile for CF yeah. week, uh, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, that's what and, kicked it um, all off. I remember seeing the story where you kind of addressed, you know, those who were watching and sort of said, I've opened up my account for CF week. Um, you know, those, those listening or watching who don't know CF week is, is kind of a, a week long community effort, isn't it? To, to share stories about CF, what it means, the reality yeah, everyone of it. Everyone shares their own story. Exactly, yeah, and and you played a big role in that, and I think I saw the story when you said, you know what, I've opened it up for CF uh, week, but it's been such an empowering week that I'm going to leave it open and do more of this kind of stuff. Was that was that your moment as such, where you sort of said to yourself, right, this is it, this is me, and and I have CF. Why am I going to close down my profile? Why not do more of this stuff? Was that the moment? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think when I realised how quickly I started connecting with other people and how many other people had the similar sense of humour, but also the similar outlook with CF and the positivity that came with it. Um, and even the, the the not so positive criticism you get from some of your posts, it yeah. makes you realise that the world is what it is. You can't change what you go through. Some people might not like what you post, but that's what I go through. And it just kind of made me realise that I, it, showing all the good and the bad is what CF and, and putting it online is all about. I, I can understand that some people are very shy and their journeys are very personal and there's no right or wrong way of how you go about sharing your story. Mm-hmm. But for me, I've always been about just providing my story as a way to hopefully help someone else to realise that, you know, they're not on their own, but there's also other people out there that are like-minded that they can talk to and have a laugh with. And that's, I've always been about with CF, you know, we talk about average age numbers and silly things. I've always been about living, life is for living and it's it's all about living your best life, not a long life. It's yeah. all about quantity rather than, uh, or quality rather than quantity, I should say. Sure. 
And and that's what I think that's really what CF is all about. It's about enjoying what is in front of you, even on the hard days where CF makes you feel really sick. And we've, I mean, you've had it yourself with your journey with Cafetrio and that, mm-hmm. it, especially on the bad days, there's still moments where you laugh in them bad days and they all, you should all appreciate the good and the bad because the bad helps you to learn to appreciate the good more. Definitely. Definitely. And prior to that, prior to CF week, how involved were you with the community? Did you have a certain select few sort of friends that you reached out with or were you completely hands off before that, that time last year? I mean, in terms of like charity stuff, I had done a lot of charity like challenges and stuff, sure. trying to raise money for the CF Trust and, and various charities and that. But in terms of like opening up, I had a very close knit friend group with cystic fibrosis. Um, not, not through choice, just because I didn't realize how easy it was to connect with people online by mm-hmm. opening your stories up. And as soon as I opened mine up and started sharing stuff about CF week, it really did click. And I realized, you know, I, I know I'm not the only one that goes through CF like yourself. We all go through, it's a different journey, but a similar journey in many yeah. ways. Yeah. And I think I just started realizing that I, sh- I should share more because there was other people that I could talk to. And we talk about mental health more than any ever now with cystic fibrosis. And mm-hmm. I think opening my story actually has helped myself as well to, to vent my story in a way to yeah, show yeah. the good and the bad. Yeah, definitely. So you, you kind of had a, a closer knit group back then prior to CF week. What about before that? Yeah. What was, what was sort of, you know, growing up, did, did did people around you know? Was it kind of need to know basis, or were you just open locally with with anyone who who asked the question? Oh no! See, for me, uh, growing up as a kid in school, and then even like into my teenage years, where I started going out drinking and and, and whatnot, I was always honest and open about my CF because mm. you didn't know who you were going to bump into, and it might you might bump into someone like I have in the past, whose daughter had just been born at the time with CF. And they were like, oh, I hear you've got cystic fibrosis from a friend in the pub. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, um, if you ever need to talk about it or, or have any advice, please, you know, here's my number, uh, always ring me. So although I haven't had my social media open for very long, well, 18 months now, sure. I've always been honest and open because I've always wanted to try and help people, not forcibly, but just by being honest and open about who I am and what I go through. Yeah. Hopefully that helps others to learn. And not just with cystic fibrosis, it could help someone else with other health problems to realise, you know, that yeah, life is is hard. God, it's hard with CF, but it's also about enjoying good moments as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thinking about this online situation then, um do you, yeah. looking back to, you know, what you've experienced over the last year or so of of having opened up fully online. If you were talking to, I don't know, a younger Jamie, someone out there who's going through a similar situation, um, or even a family who have just had a diagnosis or starting to come to terms with these things, would how would you position it? How would you share your own story in terms of you know um, acceptance and and getting your own story out there? Would you would you encourage it? Would you advise them to just take their own path? How, how would that advice look, would, I, you, would you think? I would I would say do whatever makes you feel comfy. Um, for me, like when I was younger particularly, I was always honest and open, but actually I was in my, like, a bit like you, I was in my own shell. And that's sure. where a lot of my mental health issue came from. Yeah. I'd always talk to people about my health, but I was never accepting of, of certain things to do with my health. I, I would say to people, oh, you know, I'm all right, or I've been doing this, or I've been doing that. But inside I'd hold everything in. I wouldn't let everything out. And that's yeah, yeah. when I started going to counselling a few years ago, the lady was like, you just sit and overthink everything, but you don't actually process anything. So like the social media stuff helped me to open up and to get my feelings out. So I would say everyone's journey, whether they want to be public or private, it is their own. There's no right or wrong. But I would say by being open that a lot of people struggle with their emotions with CF. We we see it all over the community. Yeah. I think by being open and honest, even if it is just a 
you select people within your friends group or the community, I think it helps you actually to say it out loud what you're going through and then helps you to process it, even, especially on the bad days when you're sitting there and you're going, you, you know, it's like when family say to you, oh, you're all right, but you'd be coughing your guts up and they'll you'd be like, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's normal. But inside you're like, I just want this cough to go away. Yeah. If yeah. you just spoke, even if you had one person that you trusted with everything and said, I'm struggling, and they sat and listened to you, I definitely think it helps to just let your feelings out. I'm not saying you have to go over social media like me and put silly photos up or sit on, on the screen and cry to people, you, you know, it's, but letting them emotions out, I think, especially when I was younger would have definitely helped me. I mean, mm -hmm. when I was 15, 16, there was virtually no mental health care for people with CF. Um, I mean, cross infection was, was a relatively new thing when I was sure. a kid. So mm. actually when I was younger, one of the, the easiest ways I got to process a lot of my feelings when I went to hospital was we was all in mixed wards. So we mm. could all sit with each other and talk. Even as yeah, kids, yeah. you'd say, oh, what what meds are you on? What are you taking? How did you cough? How comes you've come in? And then when the cross infection rules came in, I think that took a lot of that like close-knit community away when, within your CF ward. And then social media then came and bonded that back together by although we can't be in front of each other, we could then talk to each other online. So I would have said to myself now, I think having CF now and growing up with it now, there's so many things out there to help people get through it, mm -hmm. which I think when we were younger, we definitely missed. Like there was no social media when we were teenagers. You know, you couldn't talk to someone else with CF unless you was at the hospital mm -hmm. or you might be lucky and have a telephone number the days before we had these screens and everything. Yeah. But I definitely think social media, I would tell my, if I came along now as my younger self, I would say to myself, find people you trust and talk to them and then see how it makes you feel and then build from that. And if you want to go out to the world and say to everyone, hello world, <clears throat> here I am sat yeah. on the edge of the sofa with my gut hanging out with my scars from whatever else. That's up to, that's up to the individual. But for me, I look at social media as like a way of cancelling myself. When I post something, it's there. So if I want to go back three weeks later, six months later or a year later, in front of me is what I put at that moment and how I was feeling. And if I have days where I feel like that again, I can go back to it and see what I put. And it yeah, helps me yeah. to get over that feeling. So I would definitely say to my younger self, be open, try to be as open and honest as you can with yourself and, and really don't, I know it's easier said than done, but try not to go into a shell. So I think that's where, as you get older, that can be a help, but also a hindrance as you get older because you, you, it doesn't just affect your CF life. It can affect your personal life. You might, you, you know, I've been in relationships with people where I haven't told them where I'm really, how I really feel mm -hmm. with my, my health. And to them, that was normal, you know, yeah, but yeah. inside I was really struggling at times. Yeah. Yeah, completely. And how has sort of those around you who know you, you know, closely friends, close friends, family, how have they responded to you being far more open online? Do they love it? Have they, have they shied away from mentioning it? Do they, no, do they, they interact they, they with love it? it? Yeah. They love it because they, they see me online as the person I am when I'm in their house. Sure. I am the local village idiot that jumps around. <laughs> I want to make people laugh, even if it's at my expense. Uh, and that's what I, I do online. You know, I try to, to put it out there. And a lot of my friends are like, yeah, you're no different. There was a time where I did go quiet for quite a few years. I definitely yeah. went inside myself. And then I think as time's gone on with social media, it's made me open up again. And my friends are like, you're back to your old self. Like what you put online is exactly is what I do when I go to my friends. Yeah, I'm, yeah, no, yeah. I'm no different. I'm still, a, I'm still a wally in front of them as I am online. <laughs> but I'm also honest and open with my health for them. You know, I yeah, tell them yeah. what I'm going through. Um, yeah, I, I try to show everything now, whereas I never used to do that when I was younger. It was think, always I can cope with it on my own. Yeah. Do you think it's it's allowed you or or kind of forced you to be more honest about how you're feeling and more open about? Because I know us CFers, we're really good at just carrying on. 
We got it. Yeah. Saying, oh God. Yeah. No, no, we're all right. We're all right, and we'll carry on. And we don't want the time off work. We don't want to miss out. We don't yeah. want to do all these different things. But occasionally, sometimes, you know, I've been told that maybe you do need that break. Maybe you do need to just accept that, you know, we'll leave this trip this time, or or maybe that's not the right job opportunity because it's going to put too much of a strain. Do you think it's helped you become any more? open and honest with yourself about how you're feeling oh oh yeah without a doubt um you know by putting stuff up if if i don't if i say to people some days like they'll say oh you coming out or you're going to do this if i've put something on social media that's sometimes my way of saying you know this is how i'm feeling today so they won't even have to ask me how i feel because they'll see it and say oh you know Mm -hmm. are you all right you know we can always calm down i'm i'm hugely stubborn and extremely independent i can be sat on my backside on the floor coughing my guts up with no sleep struggling like anything with cf but i'll still say to someone don't get my tablets i'll get it i'll get up i'll get my ivs yeah i've never let anyone do my tablets or my ivs because although it sounds a bit stubborn and, and ignorant it's my way of even when i'm really poorly and down it's my way of controlling that little thing mm-hmm. if by letting someone else do it, I don't have control of it. And CF doesn't always give us control. It takes, mm. if anything, it takes more away from us yeah. than it enables us to have. So for me, by by being open and honest with everyone, but then also saying, but you still have to let me do my things. But now I'm more of accepting and just getting on with it. And social yeah. media, not just me opening up, but seeing others opening up and learning from other people, and how they've coped with if they've had an infection and stuff. I've learned more. I've definitely learned more off people online than I've given without yeah, a doubt. Yeah, There's, yeah. I'm always learning online. You learn new things with CF every day. I yeah, I'd argue everyone would agree with that as well. And from their own point of view, you know, they 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 get so much from the community, even though they're giving so much as well. You know. Um, yeah. I think. Um, Something we'll just touch on, and again, if, if if you're not comfortable with any of these questions, just say so because you know. Uh, what, go for you it. You know, I, I know, I know you're an open. Uh, guy, I'm, o- so. I'm open enough online, so there's probably nothing I can hide anyway. I wanted to touch on sort of relationships that that arena. So one of the, I think one of the reasons why I've kept CF a little bit hidden, particularly in my teens and twenties, is this idea that oh, what if. What if a girl sees this and thinks less of me, you know, because. Oh, um, yeah, I get that. You know, and almost forcing it on myself that this is a weakness. And let me tell you that I could not be further away from that idea anymore. So I'm kind of a little bit embarrassed and feel guilty for putting that on myself now. But did that play any role in, in your mind as to, you know, perhaps keeping it slightly more hidden or, or not doing so much online or. Or were you one of these people who were just completely open? You meet someone and go, do you know what? You should, cards on the table. This is me. This is my situation. Take it or leave it. How how did you uh, deal mean, with that? Yeah, when I was when I was younger, I mean, even up till recently, I haven't dated. I've only recently started uh, going out with someone, but mm. I hadn't dated properly up until then for about five years Yeah, since my last serious relationship. And there was a lot that came with that because for me, I'm like you, I never want to put my health on anyone else. Mm. It's, you know, I'm I, even now when people say to me online, when I've been through the whole dating stuff in the past, I'm apologizing to people in conversation saying, you know, I've got cystic fibrosis completely understand if it's something you don't want to deal with. Like, I'm sorry. It is what it is. You know, um, I'll, I'll tell them what it is, but I always apologize. And I say, look, you know, I don't want to put it on anyone. It's it's my responsibility, but naturally that's going to leak into a relationship. Yeah. It's what yeah. forms a good relationship is the fact that someone will love you and want to look after you, even if you don't want to be looked after when you're poorly. Mm. But for me, it was, I think, dating especially, like, I can remember one lady, I'll say, call her a lady, that's very polite, but <laughs> years and years ago, I was due to go on a date. With, with a, let's let's just say a woman. Let's, I'm not going to call her a lady because she definitely <laughs> weren't a lady when she replied to me. But we organised a date and we were due to go out. And uh, I normally I tell everyone up front about my health, but this woman, for yeah. whatever reason, I just hadn't said it. Not because mm. I didn't want to. I I thought I'd told her I hadn't. 
Anyway, we had uh, arranged a date. We was due to go out. I think it was like the day before. And I messaged her saying, well, I'm coming from the hospital. I'll meet you afterwards. And she's like, oh, what are you going to the hospital for? And explained, you know, I've got to go for a checkup about my CF. And then I realised I hadn't told her. And she went all quiet, it was fine. And then the next day, the, well, the day of the date, she texted me saying, I don't want this to come across rude, but it, having you in my life would be drama and hassle with your health that I don't need. And she was wow. kind of just, literally just said that as plain as you like. And <laughs> I think for a little while it did play on me for a bit because I was yeah. like, I know I'm it. I, I always look at myself as a hindrance, not just in relationships with with partners, but with family as well. You, you know, you don't want to put anyone out with CF, but that that woman in particular for a very long time definitely played on my mind. And I mm. think that was like within the first couple of weeks of starting on like the whole online dating thing. And it probably took me the best part of about 18 months to work out. Actually, if I find, if I'd have found someone that really made me want to be with them, I wouldn't have thought about it. But a lot of people I met, I just felt like a hindrance. Mm. It 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 really played on my mind, and yeah. I I mean, even in in my last serious relationship, it it definitely played a part to the point where yeah. I mean, hopefully she'll never see this because I'm going to be really <laughs> open and honest. But we, I split up with a a, a lady years ago. I basically cancelled a wedding with a lady because my mental health started taking over with me. Uh, I don't think she understood what I was going through. And it it got to the point where I felt like the biggest hindrance in the world. So for without any explanation whatsoever, it, I just stopped the relationship after nearly five years together. And I just stopped and left. And the next day, and you acted were planning like on getting what, happened. You were planning on getting married at that point, were you? Yeah, but it all of a sudden just kicked in, and I could not get it out of my head how much my health was going to affect the other person. So I suppose I thought I was doing a good thing by trying to protect that person, um, but uh, it it really screwed me up for about a year, eighteen months. I had yeah. to go. Yeah. Oh, that's when I started cancelling because I realised I had some very severe issue. And then I got diagnosed with depression around that time. Um, but it, it, you have to go through these things sometimes to realize that I know we all have a lot to offer someone. We have a lot to offer the right person. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the wrong person doesn't deserve our, not services, should we say, but our personalities. But when the right person comes along, they won't see you as someone with an illness. They'll see you as the personality and the character you are. Um, but yeah. in the past, I've really struggled to see that. I have re uh, yeah. I mean, like I say, the last relationship I had, I, sc I screwed up. I, I, I'll admit it now. I screwed up. I messed everything up because for a long time, I didn't realise what was going on in my head. I just, I felt like I had to get away and be on my own to sort my own problems mm. and I wasn't prepared to let someone else sit and support me through that. I wanted to do it on my own. And yeah. that's where the CF stubbornness probably comes in a bit, but mm. also I just, I felt like the biggest hindrance in the world. That's my, my not, I don't regret it because it helped me to realize what I was going through. It's, um, I was going to say, how do you feel change. about that? That dis obviously you've, you've moved on now and life's very different, but in terms of where you were at at that stage mentally and, and putting those feelings upon yourself that you were potentially seeing yourself as a burden on someone else and all those things. How do you feel about that right now? Do you look at that and say, well, actually that, that I'd still think that I was a burden at that stage, or do you look at yourself very dis differently now? I, I look in two ways. I think, Firstly, that I let my health get the better of, of me, without a doubt. And it wasn't yep. just a five-minute thing. It probably played on my mind for about a year, 18 months before I sort of, I just left. And I think for me, I look now and I realise actually doing what I did made me understand that I had mental health issues uh, far beyond what I, un I thought I had. Before that point, I hadn't been diagnosed with depression or, or anything like that. But to me, I was just coping with CF on my own, you know. 
a lot of us with CF have a hard exterior and, you know, we're, we'll say, oh, we're fine, we're fine. But inside, we're not. And yeah. going through that, it was probably the, one of the hardest things I've been through. But actually, I wouldn't change it now because if I hadn't have gone through that and carried on living the way I was, I dread to think where I would be. I, I probably wouldn't be here now if I'd have mm. stayed in that relationship, not because of the person I was with, but because of the state of mind I was in. It's... Um, it, yeah, it wasn't easy. Yeah, because we're 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 mighty fine individuals. We wanna we wanna keep our own strength. We don't wanna look like we're weak, even when we are. But actually, although I I still do all my own drugs now, I would say to someone if someone is around you that loves you and wants to be with you, let them in, even if it scares them. Yeah, there is gonna come a point one day where they're probably gonna see you really really ill. And and you can't hide that from them. And you mm. don't want to get to that moment when you're, you know, on your bed, uh, like we spoke about Nicole, when she was really poorly and, and Kieran, bless him, stuck, stuck with her through thick and thin. Never, you know, I've never seen someone look so strong as, as Kieran with, with Nicole. But that is a prime example of, like, people are going to get to see that one day with your CF. Even with Caftria, we're going to get ill one day. Yeah, you don't want to get to that point, and that be the first time you let someone in, and they go straight out the door because they can't cope. I think it's not nice to see someone suffer, even for people with CF. When our parents or grandparents get poorly, you don't want to see it. But by letting someone in, just to give them an idea of what CF is, and to not hide away from it, I think it helps prepare people when you're poorly for them to not stick around, but to offer help even if you don't want to take it they'll offer help and mean it without just disheartenedly saying are you all right mm. but because they'll start to understand what you're going through you've got to remember it's it's hard enough with cf to love yourself some days let alone to let someone in and let them love you with cf so you have to accept that even if you don't love yourself there is probably nine times out of 10, someone behind you supporting you that really does love you yeah. just for the person you are, even when you don't like what you see in the mirror. I think that's one of the most empowering things about opening up and sharing your story for me, because there is no hiding from the fact that I have CF anymore. You know, my, yeah. all my profiles are open. If I meet anyone... They're there for them and to see. And you've written a song about it. I mean, I mean you can't yeah, get away I, from I couldn't, it. It's I couldn't do now. much more. <laughs> Literally done a song and dance about this. Well, maybe not the dance. <laughs> but but whilst there might be some nervousness for some people that, oh, God, everyone's going to know, even if I, you know, I might want to hold this back, even though that's the case, for me there's that sense of, of, a, of a weight being lifted, you know, because... I've kind mm. of, I, I'll, I'll let my content have that conversation, you know, and if they want to go Exactly it, that, I was going to say, someone can find out who you are by going on your social exactly. media yeah. and seeing what you're all about. So you yeah. don't have to, and if that's not for you, about it. If that's not for you, exactly. then it's not going anywhere. You'll never know. Exactly. exactly. And you'll never know. You'll but, never but know. You haven't got to go through that past, heartache. Mate, my approach in the past, mate, has been, no, no, you, you know, you've got to go on the dates. You've got to pretend nothing's wrong. You've got to sneak the creon in, <laughs> in between, sort of, whilst you're having a bit of food in front of them, hope hope that they turn a different way and you'll what, throw some creon in and all these different things. What, and made, then, you, what made you want to hide your your CF on dates? I think, what, like I said, worried, front, I, I think I, uh, I, I convinced myself that it was a weakness and, and I honestly couldn't be further away from that now. It's the opposite. You know, the amount of people, you'll know, the amount of people that reach out to you and go, geez, you know, Mark, that, that is such an inspiring story or I love that, that bit of content that you've done or that's hilarious and it's something serious, but it has a bit of humour attached to it. And it's it's empowering for other people to see. You know, like yeah. I, I often think, because, we, you know, we're human beings, everyone has a bad day from time to time. Add CF on top of that. You know, that's what I always oh. say. Add CF on or any any condition that that is chronic and that you know is really zapping you of energy. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's limiting your life in some way, shape, or form. Add just yeah. normal oh, yeah. life on top of that, and it, it's 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 unbelievably 
difficult to manage. And I think other it, people it's... now, because we're so open, because we're sharing the stories, um, you know, they're starting to get a glimpse of that. And they, and they can sit there and go, so despite all of that struggle, you're still doing what you're doing. You know, you're still getting out there. You're still doing the fitness stuff. You're still, you know, shouting about the awareness side of things. You're taking part in CF week and you're, you, you're loud and proud about it. And, and that's who I yeah, am now, you know, and I wish I'd have been that way earlier on. Oh, uh, yeah, don't get me wrong. I wish I'd been hit the person I am now years ago. I yeah. think you said about CF being a, a weakness, but actually I think CF makes us become some of the strongest people you'll ever meet. Makes a superpower. Because of what we go through. Like 100% it, yeah. oh, believe yeah, so that. Definitely. I honestly believe if I didn't have cystic fibrosis, I wouldn't do half the stuff I do physically. I wouldn't push myself for all the, Agreed. you know, the, the running and stuff. Yeah. Because I wouldn't need to. Mm. It's, it's. I think that it's going to sound weird, but my fear of CF fuels me to to stay as strong as I do. If I didn't have my fear of CF, a, I don't think I'd appreciate life as much as I do now. You know, I I wake up every day and I'm grateful for the fact I get to do what I do. Yeah. I, money, money, in my eyes, is a commodity. I've never valued money the same way that I think normal people do. People go to work because they need to earn money to pay bills. Mm -hmm. I go to work, obviously, because I have to, and I work hard. But it's just there. Yeah. You know, it's 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 something that you need in life, but it's not. It doesn't have the same value to me as going down the road and having a walk and getting to just look at what's in front of you. And people say CF is, like you say, I was the same as you for a long time. I always thought CF was a weakness to mm -hmm. other people. But my my CF perspective as a weakness actually turned out to be my strength because yeah. it made me want to get up and prove to others that I wasn't as weak as I thought. And then made me in turn realise to myself that I wasn't as weak as I thought. Yeah. I was a lot stronger than I realised. Mm -hmm. And that's what I use every day. I look at myself and I think, what have I done? What, what am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I think being weak is, couldn't, like I say, couldn't be further from the truth. It's, we're probably, the whole community as a whole, I even see people, someone said to me recently, uh, who inspires you? And I don't think they believe me because I said, I don't look to all these super fit individuals. You know, I follow sports stars and, and, and various people in the CF world who are super fit and everything. Yep. But I, I don't look to people who are super fit, posting about whatnot online. I look to the people that have had a very big story of struggle and who are still struggling, but are still fighting every day. Yep. Looking at someone yep. that might be really poorly in hospital but he's still getting up every day, doing their tablets, doing their meds, is more inspiring to me than someone that's just gone and broke a PR for a marathon. Yeah. You know, you, you break a PR for a marathon because you want to. You get up every day and you fight with CF, A, because you want to, but you have to, and it pushes you on every day. Yeah. And that, to me, seeing people online like yourself when you were really poorly, uh, Nicole, Chris, I mean, I could reel off names of people that I, I look to every day and to know that they've come through what they've come through and then they still want to be here and not be better people because you couldn't find better people than the people on here, but to keep wanting to be more. Yeah. That, yeah. I think, is what inspired me more than anything else out there. Seeing mm. other people's stories and realising what they've come through and, A, that they're willing to tell people their story even if it's like I talk to people in private whose stories are not open and they tell me what they're going through. Yeah. That to me is more inspiring than listening to someone that's just, you know, gone and done whatever, lifted a massive boulder over their head or whatever. Yeah. No, I agree, mate. So just on the, um, just as we're on fitness, um, yeah. for those, for those who watch this, if you're not following Jamie, make sure you give him a follow. Um, he's big into his fitness. He sets himself some quite difficult challenges um, and seems to be up yeah. in the ante <laughs> every time yes. Every time I see him talk about a new one. So, I mean, what, what what's your plan with fitness right now? Are you, are you training for anything specific? Are you, have you got any plans or is this just about enjoying the fruits of, of what Caf Trio has brought along? I mean, definitely. Firstly, Caf Trio has upped my fitness massively. I'm still poorly. I'm still only 60% lung function. Yeah. There is still days where I notice it, but for me, 
because my body isn't concentrating on fighting my health so much, it's yeah. helping me to progress in my fitness. So for me, I think as soon, I think within like four or five weeks of calf trio, I noticed my running was getting ridiculous. And then I started being able to lift more. Yeah. And I noticed I was putting more muscle on. Yeah. Whereas I, I'd go to the gym and lift God knows tons of weights. Well, not tons, but maybe a few kilos <laughs> to some people. Yeah. But I'd do that and I'd never see progress. Since yeah. calf yeah. trio, I've noticed physically I can see a change. I've noticed, I've, someone said to me the other day, my voice has changed a bit with calf trio. Right. I'm not coughing as much. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. It's bound to then, isn't so it? Not, yeah, of course. It's not as raspy. Yeah, yeah. But um, also physically, I don't feel like my shoulders are as slouched. Yeah. Do you know, like when you'd cough mm-hmm. all the time and you was always over like that? Because I'm not coughing as much, I feel more upright. And you've got to think but, of the compound effects of all this over time as yeah. well. You know what I mean? Because we have been slowly but surely, we, we've rounded off and, and because we've constantly been folding yeah. in half through hours of coughing every day. And and like you say, the voice changing and just having that ability to just go that extra mile in training because you're not and, and fighting an infection. And No, and that's what's inspiring me now. Like this year, I've decided like I've never eaten to be fit and healthy. I, I train and then eat what I want, basically. Yeah, yeah. But I think having this new found energy with calf trio and like I know yourself, you're, you're big with your, your calories and what you eat and stuff. And I saw other people doing that. And it made me think I, I have a goal this year that I want to achieve the London classics medal. Okay. And I don't know if many people know that, but you basically have to do the London marathon. You have yeah. to do the hundred mile bike ride and you have to swim two miles in Hyde park in the circuit okay. time. Yeah. Well, I've done the run. And I've done the bike ride. My sole focus this year is the swim. Wow. Okay. Because I, I want to get that medal. And, do and you I swim? don't know. I can swim very well. Well, yeah. I can if I'm if I forget to if well, if I don't forget to swim. If I just jump in, I don't float <laughs> very well. But hopefully I'll float a bit better after this training program. Yeah, yeah. But I find with the training and stuff, it having calf trio has given me an opportunity to want to do more. So my my whole plan this year is to get lighter so I can run faster, I can bike faster, swim faster. I want to get that London Classics medal because I don't know. I might be wrong in saying this. I'm fairly certain nobody else with cystic fibrosis, as far as I'm aware, has that Classics medal yet. Okay. I want to be. I want to be the first person. If there is someone out there, I haven't found them. Put it that yeah, way. Yeah. But I want to be the first person with CF to hold that trilogy medal up and say. I mean, when I did when I did the the bike ride, I had less than fifty percent lung function. Mm. When I did the marathon, I had forty seven percent lung function. Mm. Mm. So I want to do it as a way to show others that if you're willing to put up with the bad side of CF, you can still push yourself. Even if it's like some people message me and they say, "Oh, you 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 love your fitness. You do like yourself." You, I see you training every day in that and you put me to shame with the weight you lift. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I'd literally fold in half some of the things you pick up. <laughs> but I see people talking and they go, oh, you you run and you walk for miles or you cycle, you lift weights and that. But then I say to them, but what are you, you know, what are you doing? Don't worry about what I'm doing. I want to know yeah, what you're yeah. doing. And they say, oh, but it's embarrassing. I'm only, I'm only able to walk a mile. And I say to someone. It doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter the distance. The fact that you'll get like someone, someone with CF who's been really poorly, them walking a mile might be like someone else who's super fit doing an ultra marathon. Absolutely, it's the fact that they're getting up and they're they're doing it. You know, they might only be doing small weights, but that weight to them would be huge. Yeah, and I think it's the it's a testament to people that are with CF that do fitness. It doesn't matter how far you run, walk, swim, or lift. The fact that you're doing it helps you with your cf every day yeah and i love seeing people who train with cf Mm -hmm. even if it's just people that go for dog walks every day yeah because that's that's a hard thing for some people to do every day it's still getting out and and also you enjoying life with cf you know you 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 try i train because i do it as a way to show others that well i do it for myself because i have a lot of doubts with my health first i've always doubted myself so I, like you say, I pick silly challenges. 
I pick what I see as the most impossible challenges that I am not capable of doing so that I can prove to myself that I'm capable of doing it. Yeah. Because in my mind, when I did the bike ride, the 100 mile bike ride in 2015, I was like, oh, I'll never do it. 100 miles, I've got no chance. The first day I got on a bike, I did six miles and I went home and slept for about three hours. <laughs> I was I'm not surprised. Ill. Yeah. It's... But the more, the more I go on, like I'm doing some, hopefully doing the triathlon with Chris this year. Yeah. Uh, or we're well not with, because you can't do things out, but we're doing the same triathlon. Uh, Neem's going to do it. And there's a few others as well that are going to come along and do yeah. bits. Brilliant. So getting to connect with people with CF as well over health stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Even if it's like um, Raylene who sings. I love talking to her about when like she posts about what she's been doing and that. I just love, People who with CF who have a passion for something, but it, you don't understand it actually helps your health physically and mentally yeah, as well. Yeah. There is something about someone with cystic fibrosis that has a determination that is off the scale that I've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. It might not be about being the biggest or the fastest or the strongest, but it's that want for life and to get up and enjoy things. Yeah. And to it want to be the best person they can be. I don't think you'll find many other people outside of the CF community that are as determined as we are. Sometimes stubborn, maybe. I know I'm <laughs> stubborn, but it's what pushes me to yeah, want to be the person yeah, I am. Completely. I completely agree, mate. I um, I, I wish you well with, uh, with the challenges, mate. I, I, I really enjoy seeing your updates, really enjoy watching you take on these uh, these big challenges. It definitely spurs yeah, me I'm on. Not... I, said, I said the same to Chris, you know, I think we all have, you know, we're still human. We're Yeah, we're on calf trio. We're all feeling a little bit better, I think I'd argue, but we're still human. We still have the days where we don't fancy it, but the fact that you can jump on it in Instagram at any moment <laughs> and yeah. see any one of us guys giving it, you know, giving CF a run for the money, um, it's it's so inspiring and encourages the rest of us to do the same. What are your what are your plans for this year? Like, what are your goals fitness wise? Fitness wise, mate. My my only goal with fitness and something that CF took away from me in my twenties was the ability to just be consistent forever. When I was um, so I started training, throwing weights around when I was seventeen, maybe, and it was yeah. a local sort of spit and sawdust old school gym. Um, Love a gym like that. Yeah, it was it, it was before sort of the boom in the fitness industry, and it was it was still very much an underground thing. You know, guys in a in a small room all lifting weights and throwing iron around and things. And I can remember walking in. I was scrawny. I was very young. I always looked, you know, back then definitely looked way younger than I was. I felt so out of place. Yeah. But the place was so warm and welcoming. You know, they couldn't. They, they, it's almost as if they, a few of them took me under their wing and I fell in love with this idea of being able to build, you know, muscles and get stronger and all these different things. And um, through my twenties, it was going really well. You know, it's, uh, I was so consistent. It was, it, if anything, mate, I put, put it before most other things, certainly put it before relationships. Yeah, I, I, still, I still do that out. now. That's the problem. Yeah. It, if, I can remember I used to work for a great organisation locally and every Friday everyone would always go straight to the pub after work and I'd be like, I can come, but it'll be in a couple of hours when I've got my session done and it would come before I everything. Do that. Everything. And, uh, yeah, towards my late 20s, that ability to be consistent was taken away from me. Um, I tried my Did best. You find with Caf Do you find with Caf Trio that consistency is coming back now? Oh, it came back the day I started it, mate. The, the day after I started it, and it's never wavered since. And it's... I that, agree with that. That is, my, that is my thing now. Just be consistent, not just with with weights, with fitness, just with everything. You, you've not... For me now, I've not got the excuse of I'm not feeling so good. And I rarely, I rarely leaned on that in the past, but there were times, as you'll know, that you've got no choice in the matter. Mm. Um. But yeah, so to be consistent, I mean, I, I'm coming up tomorrow to one year on track after and um, I've not missed a session for a year, you know, and that to me is a massive no, I've deal because that's, that's back to when I was 25, 26 years old and, you know, I'm 38 now. 
it's the satisfaction it brings, isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah. It's being able to do what you love, mm. but also to to see progress when you do things you love. I can remember being in that very gym, and I, I used to tell the 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 vascular surgeon to put the IV line somewhere between the wrist and the elbow because the elbow wouldn't work because I can't do bench press. Yeah, and just above the wrist wouldn't work because obviously you're always moving your hands. And so it would have to be somewhere in between. And I'd come into the gym and they're like, oh, you've, you've hurt your arm. You've got a bandage on. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just, a, I'm just doing a couple of weeks worth of IVs and be like, IVs? What you do? What do you mean IV? It's just antibiotics. What, through your veins? And I'm like, yeah. Well, if you're that unwell, should you be here? <laughs> and be like, I did that. you don't did get it. Same. Like, I need to be here. That That's non-negotiable. Yeah, so it's, it's for, for me, I hate sitting down and doing AD. Yeah, I hate yeah. the breathing exercises. So for me to go and train and get my lungs working that way, I find it more enjoyable. And I think it's probably for me personally, I, I know everyone's different, but for me, I get, I feel like I get more out of training to help my chest than I do sitting down and yeah, doing my, yeah. my, my breathing exercise. And I train if I'm not, I'm doing something every day. Mm. So it's not like I have a day off. I would do something. Yeah. It's, yeah. I think the, the weirdest thing for me was being determined with training. Like you say, you go to the gym with cannulas in, midlines. I can remember having my operation 2019 to have my bleeds plugged yeah. on my lungs. And I had 13 bleeds on my lungs. I didn't even know I had that many when they told me. And I'd been training up to the day I went for my operation. I had the operation uh, the next day and they said, right, you can't do anything like too drastic for two weeks, no heavy lifting, no this, no that, the other. I got to two days and I was like, I've got to go to the gym. i got to get out. And Because for me, I was like, my lungs are getting tight. I needed to get some breath in. So I went and deadlifted just to get my lungs really working. <laughs> and I can remember getting into the gym and the bloke who I know in the gym was like, haven't you just had an operation? And I was like, yeah, 13 <laughs> bleeds, mate, all plugged. <laughs> But I'm off to do deadlift. And he was like, yeah. don't go too heavy. I was like, I'll knock it off a bit. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. But I can't and, and you sit, can't, you I can can't beat the determination rest. of a CF, mate. It's, it's, oh, no. it's not happening. Yeah. I, don't, no, I think that's, that's what I, I love think, about the community. It really is. Yeah. And I think the more poorly you are, the more determined you are as well. Yeah. I, for I me, don't see the, anyone the, resting on their laurels. Yeah. The, the, for me, as I say, there the did come a time where it was like, listen, mate, you've got to accept facts. Maybe you're not going to be doing what you used to be able to do when you were 25, 26. And that, that was where I started to just ad think of life in different terms. You know, I can remember having the mm. conversation with a dietitian at the time. I was talking about weight and things. And I said, I can remember saying the exact words were, I think I just need to accept now that I'm not going to be this sort of mus muscular fit guy that yeah, I, that I've I been thought I was. The same thing. Um, and, but who knew what was around the corner, mate? You know, and and here we are <laughs> doing all of those things and more. Yeah. Listen, mate, we are way beyond where I expected us to be. Yeah. You I'm and just... I, I said the same to Chris. You and I could speak all night, seemingly, <laughs> because there's so much to cover. Um, there's so much commonality in, in our experiences, and I think that's the great thing. That's why many of us are opening up now, because it's such a breath of fresh air to know that someone else knows exactly how you feel. Uh, just finally, mate, you've, you've touched on it a few times here, but if, if there was one or two things that you could just sum up and say to someone, perhaps a young family or a young guy, maybe some, you know, maybe our younger selves who were approaching teenage years or mid-teens who was nervous about opening up, what would you say to them? If you're worried about being open, there is still people behind closed doors that will talk to anybody and everybody and offer advice or guidance or just be there to listen. I can't tell you how many people within the CF community I speak to or message me and they are always willing and kind enough to offer me their time and advice. And I think that goes for the whole community. Yeah. Just get stuck into the community. Ask if you, even if you're afraid, ask them, just ask a couple of questions. You, 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 you don't know what asking that first question could lead to exactly. in terms of yeah. making you feel better. Sure. It's sure. small steps, but, when you're ready, just come into the community. We're all here to say hello and yeah. we'll all talk to anybody. Brilliant. 
Well, listen, mate, I'm going to end this chat by saying a huge thank you um, for those listening, for those watching. Um, give Jamie a follow. He's funny, he's determined, he's got a big heart. Um, he's got some big challenges coming up as well that we're all going to love seeing how they unfold. We can't wait to see that uh, medal in your hand when you complete that that trio. Uh, so we'll You're be not the only one, mate, I'll tell you. <laughs> No, thank you. For, thank you for having me on, and, and thank you for listening to me for the best part of God knows how long today. It's enjoyable, I can mate. Chat for I hours think, of yourself. Yeah, it's 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 just a lovely thing, and it's so far from where I was, as I say, when I was younger. That you know, it, it, it's it's all love, and, and I've really enjoyed it. I'll finish up by saying that for me, CF was a very lonely and arduous existence. Connection to those who get it is absolutely key. Balance is important and you can do this at your own speed. But from my point of view, I can assure that assure you that when you open up, the community is ready for you and you won't regret it. Um, become that documentarian of yourself, you know, share photos, updates and ideas, embrace the community and be you know embrace us with open arms because we'll do the same. Your voice, your story, it is important. It's the most powerful thing we own. And for me, you can't find your voice unless you use it. Um, you never know who it's helping. So be honest, open up, take the weight off your shoulders, um, and you'll realise that there's an entire world waiting to be inspired by someone just like you. Cheers. Cheers.